Welcome back and or welcome, uh, ladies and gentlemen. This episode today, uh, in what would be a series of me solving all the pressing concerns the UK polity has, uh, as is my want and will, uh, is to say another very high priority, deeply concerning uh, question mark around the slowly decaying, collapsing UK system is pensions and what the UK will look like in 50 years when the majority of the population is over the age of 40, 45 and then therefore the burden on the taxpayer for pensions itself is much higher and when we consider the implications economically, socially and I think even philosophically we are becoming well we should at least become slightly worried and concerned and have quite a lot of impetus on being able to fix this alarming and pressing need so in light of that I'll highlight the why and show you the what we can do and then the rest is all political motivation and I think this is it should be very explicit it is always the case that any social problem can be solved politically if there is the will and whether the appetite is there is more or less from the politi political side than it is from the civil side or the um, can I because the populace will always be okay with almost everything it is very difficult to rouse a populace like ours into action ardently against a political um, class or a, a, you know a sitting parliament so short of having Cromwell uh, which I think the UK is short on Cromwell's and has been unfortunately but from that perspective I think it's if you ever are challenged on a lot of these I don't think we can pass this through Parliament or there's not the appetite really what they're trying to say is we're not incentivized enough to actually solve this problem because the existing problem creates value in ways that we can enrich people we know and or are um, otherwise it's ineptitude and obviously no one wants to admit that they're inept so uh, in saying that uh, the first graph on the top left here is a uh, is a lovely forecast by our economist friends in the UK government as uh, we all know economists are excellent at understanding trends and predicting things and so this is forecast from July in 2017 shows what they had anticipated to be the GDP contribution for the state pension spending. So, and uh, I did have a little look-see research today and it is the f um, pl displeasure of, of mine to tell you that the last year's pension contribution as a percentage of GDP was 7.9% or basically 8%. So that little smiley there, as you can see, he, um, indicating for us that we are unfortunately at a pivotal point in our uh, well in, in the UK's decline where the absolute spend on pensioners will only get worse and they've obviously predicted this linear increase here of uh, proportional GDP spend but it being higher sooner than predicted obviously means that it will go much higher much later anyway so a growing nominally growing economy like the UK's which we highlighted in a previous video is probably more like a static or a flat economy will only become worse and worse as the population increases and ages and we also went through total fertility rates and that being on the low end net migration being not necessarily positive in a demographic sense so not necessarily young families who are educated and unlikely to be burdens but more skewing towards uneducated masses who are always net detractors on a system um, collectively so from that angle i think we are hopefully pulling some of the alarm steam whistles if they still have that and so what do we know about the existing pension scheme obviously it's a uh, combination system whereby there's incentivization for workers to contribute to their own retirement schemes and whether that's superannuation or a pension scheme or, or uh, I think the ICA or whatever it's the, the mechanism is 
different slightly in, in some countries, but in general, there's a private mechanism and that's the your employee and employer combination payments into a saving fund whereby you allocate certain um, equity into asset classes, real estate, um, private equity, public equities, bonds, etc. Um, if you can allocate yours more aggressively if you're younger is, is probably my recommendation if you do or don't need that. Um, so things like junk bonds or high growth equities, you may as well risk it for, for this case. And then from a public side of things, the British government obviously offers quite a lot of in schemes in relation to retirees and aged care, including health care, um, which is particularly a huge burden for a population to take care of the invalids, but also just in general, older people tend to use services like healthcare more often, uh, not always for preventative, uh, for re recovery and hospice, but sometimes just preventative things like seeing the doctor every month to have blood pressure taken and things like that. So if you do suffer wait times on the NHS, uh, it's not going to get better. There's only so many or you know, so much money you can throw at systems, particularly healthcare systems. Um, when the increase in the marginal gain from every dollar spent drops off significantly. And I can obviously do an, an, an economic analysis video session on that topic specifically, but in general, it's a good way to think about the um, healthcare system. It doesn't necessarily collapse and, and not overnight, but you will find the quality and state of care uh, deteriorating if we can say it politely. Um, what does this mean? Well, if you can see in this um, bottom left with our our cheeky friend Charles there, we, we do know that most current uh, pension schemes um, and sinecures around the West are Ponzi schemes, notionally. Uh, obviously not, it's not what they're called, but there is a, an expectation that the taxpayer today will be propped up when they retire by the taxpayer of tomorrow. Um, so you put money in and you get money out. There's no investment, however. So the idea is that the tax base and the, the total taxation of the uh, um, of the, the GDP will, will increase and that will just therefore naturally take care of it. But obviously when you have these compounding factors of an aged population and a worsening tax base from um, a growth perspective, then this function starts to um, diverge from being balanced or positive to very negative. Uh, so you can see here uh, a lot of the time, well, in almost every region, a, a huge pension um, under provisioning from uh, what is about 56% here on the um, the UK broadly to 64% uh, down here in Wales. And you can see obviously that the shortfall will need to be made up somewhere. Um, I don't know if they'll go the Canada route of just euthanizing people, potentially. Um, and then obviously up here you can see the, the lumpy uh, generation graph, which allows us to look forward and interpret how many people will be of certain ages. And then we can utilize a lot of our known health cofactors around how likely are they to be obese, um, inactive, dementia riddled, etc., etc., with all these health precursors, etc. So, if you were an actuary or an insurance adjuster or something, you'll have strong knowledge of, of how they do health premiums and health insurance. But uh, in line with this and your demographic profile, so how old you are, how tall you are, how fit you are, etc., has a huge impact around um, longevity, both uh, your lifespan, but also the required intervention in your in your health barring severe accidents um so framed as that is um i would suggest alternative methods mechanisms to which we can address said um issues and i think for me it's one of those hiding in plain sight deals where if we look at what a tontine is and if you're not familiar with a tontine uh, very basically, it's a system of payments whereby you agree to go in on a pot together with contributions reflecting either some sort of presupposition around um, or an agreement 
and then once the total is pulled it will be a time structured expiration of uh, repayments and reimbursements out of that that pot so to so say me and a thousand of my friends or 999 of my friends went into a tontine for ten dollars each then obviously you're looking at a ten thousand dollar tontine uh, from which we would then pay out after 30 years to the remaining members so if you die hence the uh, the pension aspect of this if you die you get nothing uh, then you'll get distributions from the tontine pool so this is a very useful scheme when you try to allocate certain future payment requirements for an aging populace in a way that is not necessarily borrowing from future generations capacity to pay taxes but at the actual users themselves having to contribute to their own retirements which you you know and it sounds outlandish to uh, people who are used to just borrowing and then never having to pay things back but um in generational senses we won't be overburdening the next generation and, and vice versa they won't therefore resent us for making them tax slaves um a lot of scientific study well i should say a social study but uh, you know there's a lot of mathematics that can go into this around looking at stochastic analysis so that's the you know if we plotted over time and we had the market rates so if we assume there was a four or five six percent return on a set amount of money then you can grow that tontine pool over 30 years to be a certain larger pot whereby you can then adjust the actual reimbursements and 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 the both total and then the relative amounts that you'll be getting via more or less um probably on a probability basis so when we do look at your demographics you'll notice men are more likely to die earlier than women and unhealthy people, obese people, smokers, people like high risk cofactors will always be more likely to die. Um, anything you have genetically um, is obviously going to be important uh, to know. So you can construct the tontine around a lot of these health factors which will be known to the NHS or your doctor or an insurance company's profile of you anyway so having a fair and equitable contribution contract is quite an easy solution to this and if you reach a certain age and say you are 30 35 and they go you're now officially registered to um, pay into this tom team that will run for 30 years until the retirement age of 65 and then there'll be disbursements or distributions from the pool every year until your death with an increasing amount of um, payments because obviously your your cohort will uh, expire along those lines and then I think it's uh, hopefully fairly intuitive for, from that so the the scientific studies themselves and, and I should step back and say would the UK populace be actually keen on this uh, and when you look at online gambling sports betting uh, and in general the speculative nature of the the British citizen and they're big gamblers <laughs> they like to so i think if you basically engineer this to be more or less a speculative or gambling uh tool or something fun like that i think the the british populace would actually get on board and be enthusiastic about this idea whereas to say pensions are not very sexy we all know we're getting less than we want to live a life that's barely above poverty uh, and with that level of privation i think it's hard to get enthusiastic about stealing tax dollars from disenfranchised and and working class youth from the you know, two generations below us um, it, it doesn't incite me to think of if my kids or my grandchildren or something like that were paying from their measly graduate salaries 50 euro or 50 quid or 50 american dollars in that point to a tax authority that then distributes to me five of those dollars it just I think it's it's a very sour situation for almost everyone involved but in any case i think with the proclivity for gambling and speculation uh, the uk populace would probably be quite uh, keen on something like this if we can if you could set it up in in such a way that it's yeah understood and and i think uh, you could use a blockchain you can make it very transparent uh, accessible understood it's no more complex than i think taxes and we all know that a lot of people don't understand taxes so 
you have potentially a risk there, but there's only so much um, instruction you can give some people. But I, I, I do feel like the tontine is a very, very basic conceptual mechanism for returning money to people who have gambled into it. So you can get them adjusted uh, in, in terms of practicalities are very uh, specific. The, the variables are, well, they can be, there can be a lot of them, but they, the, the important ones, are obviously the return rate, the, the disbursement. And so when and how old you need to be for them to start paying and how often you'll be receiving payments, whether it's quarterly, annually, obviously with pensions being bi -week, uh, fortnightly or, or weekly. Uh, and then whether there's a also a finite length of the tontines payout, so is it in perpetuity and etc. So you can see obviously from the, the graphs here, I've been able to collate uh, that you have more or less a very adjustable level of both a return profile, a payment profile and the age between receiving and death and how that looks from a population. If it's a Gaussian distribution, you know, it's, it's, it's fairly standard that you lose X percent every year with step stepwise losses, the closer you get to say 75, 80, 90 years old. But that's more or less my, my political solutions. I, I don't want to channel to just be here showing you problems and saying everything really sucks and there's no hope. Here's this immense despair that I'm injecting into your brain, but rather that there are solutions and then when, when there's a political will for anything, it's possible to fix and, and um, re-engineer exactly what decline means and how we can think about uh, society improving upon its 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 merits and its its current station. Regardless, I think it's one of those things that's worth discussing, and we'll see how many fi financially literate MPs there are in this new parliament. Probably very few, and zero percent of them will look at this channel and hear this, but I think if enough people start discussing alternative solutions to very obvious and impending problems, then we'll be in a much better state by say 2030.